Today's hot topic is all about the exciting upcoming launch of HyperSign ID. We're fortunate to have Vikram Bhushan, co-founder and product and engineering lead of HyperMind Labs, joining us to talk about the drop of HyperSign Testnet on the 28th of September, which means it is happening ASAP <laughs> tomorrow if you're catching this uh, immediately after our recording. Uh, but uh, Vikram, welcome to Edge of NFT. I understand you're in Singapore right now, and we just found out <laughs> you're there with some of our teams, so we'll actually have to connect with you live and in person. Would love to meet them, you know, um, figure out some time to have a chat over coffee. Very cool. Um, well, Singapore... Thank you, very much. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, to come on the show. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, Singapore is the place to be right now. Like, uh, there's certainly a lot of people in our circles that, you know, we're talking to, uh, you know, podcast guests, so, so on and so forth. And they say, oh, you're in Singapore. I'm, I'm personally in Chicago right now. But they're saying, oh, I'm everybody's going to Singapore. I wish I could go, you know. So um, I'm glad you could make it out there and be a part of, of uh, the excitement. Uh, but yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about Hypermine. Um, uh, I have here, this is an avant-garde technology and research organization that's dedicated to building trust and transparency in the real world um, with a vision uh, to create a sort of, of special world, right? Visioned uh, by uh, Hypermine here. So privacy is a fundamental right uh, where data is secure and belongs to us. Can you talk a little bit about why that's such a central tenant of what you're doing. Yeah, indeed. Um, so, so basically, in 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 our opinion, actually, in real world, there is certain uh, there is certain amount of privacy. Meaning that if you are in a room and if your room room's door and windows are locked, probably what you are speaking, no one else will hear it. You know, but when it comes to uh, the digital world. The way, you know, the internet was built is completely broken, meaning that, uh, I mean, the foundation of internet uh, was built around uh, centralized identity providers. So, you know, it, it basically converted into that and now they are the custodian of everything. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, which leads, although we feel that these are very helpful tools, but it ended up in breaking the whole, you know, privacy. So there is literally no privacy on, on internet uh, currently. So, so there are some, you know, baby steps being taken by uh, the Web3 ecosystem uh, or even, you know, other uh, developers who are uh, focused on uh, privacy uh, technology. So we just feel the pain. Uh, uh, we, uh, one of our co-founder, Irfan, he's, uh, he, he has been working in identity, uh, you know, ecosystem business for a long time. Like he was part of many national ID projects in uh, Europe and Africa. So he basically he understood how bad it is <laughs> in terms of privacy. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it might be helping the... Uh, uh, the users in some way, uh, these infrastructure, but there is absolutely no privacy. So we thought, you know, since it is so close to our heart, probably we can work on it. Initially, it was just hackathons. We were participating in multiple hackathons, building simple proof of concept and which is now, you know, being launched as a chain. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's a super important issue, right? And it's it's yeah, privacy is so such a flexible concept these days, it's, and so many people are. the The strange part about it is, it's private. How much your privacy has been invaded, right? So it's like, you know, there's a lot of details about us individually that get into the hands of marketers and companies and all this stuff, and of course they don't really want to tell us everything they have access to because it's going to creep us out more and more and more. Right. And so that it's funny now that I think about how that information that has been given and that is looked at and this analyzed and access, that is actually what's kept private from us whose information it is. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um, a simple way to understand if people, I mean, if the audience are already crypto friendly, um, in Web3, you can see, uh, you know, um, 
a wallet can be actually tracked how the funds were transferred i mean uh, in in a uh, in a way this is not possible in in web2 because every business will tell you that i am not exploiting your data but you don't know if they are exploiting your data or not the reason being that you don't control your data mm-hmm. and and that's where the problem with privacy comes because we are letting uh, control of our data to someone else and yeah. uh, they are the custodian and, and and we have no audit uh, no way to uh, see as a user i'm not talking about you know big institutions uh, auditing firms even if they do but there is no uh, transparency report but if you look at blockchain you can actually audit every smart contract every transaction um what if you know this could be done for data like uh, you know moving forward user manage their own data all these businesses just provide you legos of how do you manage these data and then you have complete audit trail of how or and when the data, uh, data was used so even if you are exchanging data with a business they would think 10 times before sharing it with someone else without your consent right so yeah it's beautiful yeah we could probably we could talk about privacy all day we've talked about identity privacy um there's clearly like a whole world of you know creativity and 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 you know implementation to go on here and how we manipulate privacy and identity and uh this need for decentralized identity and verifiable credentials in web3 and and in the web in general is is very strong so how does hypersign actually solve for this gap in the market yeah that's a cool question um so if you if you look at web3 actually there is no privacy there is pseudo privacy you know uh, but the issue is as soon as your wallet is exposed then you have absolutely no so in a way it solves the the trail problem like mm-hmm. you know if the uh, uh, state of uh, i mean storage is moving so how is it moving in where it is moving but then it created another problem which is like uh, you everything is public in a public blockchain you know so that's where you know the identity problem starts in 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 web3 world uh, blockchain do not have any identity it's completely uh, trustless and it, everything is public so you cannot store private data meaning that the whole blockchain ecosystem needs basically another layer of identity uh, infrastructure which could uh basically abstract the the private data and somehow connect it with the web3 identity that we have our wallets and somehow we have like uh, credentials which could define us in the web3 world and the web2 world both so basically a bridge between our private data which which, which cannot go on chain uh and and our existing uh, web3 identity um so so basically hypersign is trying to do that like uh, creating mm-hmm. a bridge which could uh, basically uh, you know uh, b- with the help of dids and verifiable credential uh, so basically mm-hmm. there are these are two different technology which uh, hypersign is built on it's and it's part of self sovereign identity uh, so what did does is like just provide a unique identifier just like your wallet address but it has lot many features related with data management private data management and this dids can be verified on chain meaning any data which is being issued to you from a business or you issuing some data information to another business you know so all these can be verified on chain but kept off chain and the way to keep off chain it's called verifiable credential so these are like um, as i told you lego so when you look at uh, a ship right so ship has container and you can put any type of in, uh, you know things inside the container but it's all structured like just container is standard so similarly mm-hmm. verifiable credentials are uh, containers to store private information which can be verified on chain and that's when uh, the centralized uh, third party provider need not have to be custodian of your data they just need to provide you an infrastructure where it's actually controlled by your wallets mm. you know what i mean yeah. and then you share the uh, verifiable credential to uh, the businesses that you interact with and and they can uh, verify that these are authentic data set by querying your dids 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's, it's it's like, it's, I think essentially I'm getting the analogy, you know, you have a very strong, sturdy ship, right? Which is a impenetrable, could consider it some type of like, you know, warship. It is not a war going on, but it's very sturdy. It's very secure. You can't get things out of it that are inside. And I want to put my things in there so I can move them around in a way that's secure. And basically you're saying, you're not going to ride on the ship. You're not going to be inside the ship. You're just going to provide the ship. Hey, here's a ship. You want to take your data. You want to move it around secure way. We're going to make a ship where you can do that easily. Yeah. And since I told you the example of containers, you cannot mm-hmm. actually see inside a container what is inside. You know? Exactly. Just, uh, imagine like this, like you uh, some data which is supposed to be verified by uh, a public blockchain, but uh, it's in a container. So only the container can be verified. And since the container is verified, you are the, the network thinks that the data inside it is actually uh, verified data by uh, the right issuing authority. Mm. Uh, you know, so this way, even if you are putting private data, like suppose you have a credential and you are accessing a, a, a lending platform and this credential is a KYC credential. Previously, uh, there is no way to do this because if you send your actual private information, like your address uh, on a public blockchain, the node validators can see actually what's going inside the transaction, right? So, but if you containerize this into zero knowledge credentials, and then if you send to a smart contract, the smart contract can only verify signatures. They don't need to actually check what's the private data. The zero knowledge technology can help to verify amount of data. For a ex- very simple example, you, somebody, a smart contract needs to verify your date of birth, but it doesn't need to verify your date of birth. It needs to verify just that. How old are you? Like, are you older than 30, 30 years or you are younger, uh, you know, example. Right. So that could be possible using verifiable credentials. Very cool. Um, let's let's uh, switch the topic here a little bit because there's a, a marketing tool that, that's been created called Fire, right? Um, and it's been growing uh, and um, it's, it's, it's created for the blockchain industry. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And then uh, we have a demo video that we'll make sure we, uh, we let the listeners check out as well. Yeah, sure. So um, wh- one of the use cases of decentralized identity is definitely airdrops uh, because airdrop is a Web3 problem. It's huge. It's a you know, basic uh, build marketing tool to create communities, bootstrap communities. And when we actually did our token sale, we realized that uh, most of our airdrops bot was actually taken over by bots, meaning that just one developer writing script to fill a complete form with uh, thousands or 40,000 plus you know, uh, requests. And then we end up giving all the airdrops to just one or 2%. So we felt like, what if we saw, this is very small, simple problem, but it is across the industry, you know, regardless of what community you choose. In, for example, Cosmos ecosystem, the, the networks are bootstrapped by airdropping tokens to uh, atom holders. But many VCs and many validators have like thousands of wallets and uh, they do that because, you know, they can get airdrop from the new projects. So. We, we saw this pain and we thought like, if we have to, you know, we have to figure out a go-to-market strategy for our DIDs to be utilized and for our SDKs to be tested in production, the developers need to see example, existing stamp example, what they can build. So we basically looked at these problem a marketing person has in Web3 and we built one simple tool where we connected all their social And uh, as I was telling, uh, on-chain and off-chain information, like your social identity, your wallets, uh, you know, wallet score, uh, KYC, all of these in just one simple tool. And it looked exactly like an existing uh, Web2 product, but it is much more secure and much more, uh, you know, able to uh, basically give a better results in terms of bot uh, verification and and then we started approaching you know different projects if they would use uh, we got lucky NFT LA tried it and uh, Web3 uh, Ethereum some of the Ethereum uh, events they tried it and that gave us some community and from there now we see a steady growth you know so uh, every month on month um, we are seeing uh, last month we saw like 
80,000 plus DIDs were created on that platform. Amazing. Uh, in a, uh, if you look at any project in DID uh, and check the numbers, the, this is much more than any existing uh, protocol because our use case is so simple and it is actually needed. And uh, very few people are trying to solve using DID. So probably that worked for us. Uh, that's one. And the second one is, as I told you, you know, uh, as we progress from the network side, since our testnet is going tomorrow live, the whole uh, uh, fire uh, product moves into the testnet and then to the mainnet. So uh, all the authentication is happening through our uh, HyperSign identity wallet. So by default, we have now active 40,000 users on our platform active. Wow. Like, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. I might, uh, if you ask Pankaj, he might be able to give you like uh, all those numbers, you know, like monthly or sorry, minute and hourly, how many active users are there. So, and these are all using our wallet, you know, so probably on the day one of network launch, we have 40,000 HyperSign ID wallet already created. So, Beautiful. so that was a grow to market strategy for HyperSign, but we wanted to contribute to our partners. And uh, uh, luckily now we have 500 plus partners and many of them, they appreciated this product. Very cool. Um, well, it's we wish we could spend all day with you, um, but we only have a bit for our hot topic. And it's been really interesting. Uh, really excited to connect you with uh, with Josh and Audrey out there in Singapore too. And you guys can have a drink and uh, and enjoy, uh, enjoy an evening uh, after the conference or, or, or at a meeting or something. So that's exciting. Uh, before we ro roll out, um, you know, share with us uh, where people can go to find out more about uh, you and, and uh, what you're up to. Okay, so on Twitter, you can just find me DID space intern. And uh, my project is called HyperSign. So, uh, and the handle, Twitter handle is HyperSign Chain. Uh, H Y P E R S I G N C H A N. Uh, Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a privilege to chat with you and look forward to chatting more.